You're listening to Heart Breakfast with Jamie Theakston and Amanda Holden. Our special guest this morning is one quarter of the biggest girl band on the planet from Little Mix, Jesse Nelson. Woo! Hi, Jesse. Thanks for coming in. Oh, pleasure. How, first of all, how does it feel not being with the rest of the I, girls? I'm not even trying to hate it. Really? Do you? I thought you were about to say I, I love, love it. it. No, <laughs> no I peace. hate it. They're like what? my... Oh, they're like my safety blanket. Oh. So it feels very weird being without them. This is like my first time I've done something without them. Is it? Yeah, oh. it's really strange. Now that they're not here yes. and we can dish the time. <laughs> yeah. Let's just, who Who'd is the vain, who's the vainest? Oh, none of them. Oh, Jamie. <laughs> who's the most, mo- who moans the most? But me. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you are here to tell us about uh, Jesse Nelson, my story. Yeah. Which is on BBC One tonight. Yeah. Which is a uh, a very honest and frank documentary that you yeah. uh, have made. T- it, tell us a little bit more uh, about the show and what it's about. Yeah. Mm. So it's called Odd One Out, and it's about the first four years of trolling that I suffered in Little Mix. And obviously, when I got into Little Mix, I never knew anything about social media. I'm quite like, as a teenager, I didn't have Facebook. Mm. I didn't didn't like. I'm not very Techie. Techie, no. yeah. No. So I didn't really have a clue what any of that was. And obviously when we went on x we were told, we got given these mobile phones and they were like, you've got to have social media. Right. And from the minute we performed, it was just like endless and endless amounts of just awful comments of people just saying what they wanted about me. And <sighs> as a like just turned 20 year old girl, I was like, I didn't know how to deal with it and I didn't know how to handle it. And it just spiralled out of control and led me to a really dark place. And yeah, I got really depressed. It was so, just... so can, what, I mean, I don't want to go, go into it too much, but what kind yeah. of thing are we talking about? What, were, what, the were, they, what were they saying? Can you remember the worst thing somebody said to you? I mean, people used to like say that I should chop my head off because my face is deformed. <gasps> um, yeah, like just there are other things, but I don't. I've turned no, very sure. acceptable to say. No, okay. But yeah, I just like and as a as a young girl, like, I've never really had a problem with my weight, with the way I look. And then I just, after a while, I become obsessed with reading comments. Mm. And I genuinely started to believe everything that people were saying about me. And yeah, it just, it just led me to like depression. It I was... think it's it's very, very hard not to take things personally, isn't oh, it? absolutely. And I think especially on a massive show like X Factor or Britain's Got yeah. Talent or any of those big shows, it's kind of a new reality. Yeah. And I call these people, they're just cowards on keyboards. They yeah. hide behind... I would love to do a show where we just, me and you, could go together, knock oh, on the door and go, Oi, it. you, But do you know you what? Said None this. of these people ever want to be on telly no. or ever want to show their face. This exactly. But um, what, I've, what, I, what really got to me was when I'd see that it was like grown women, grown men, and there'd be like mums and dads who have got kids. And, and after a while, I used to think, oh, my God, well, this must be true because everyone's saying it, like... And, and so, yeah, it really mentally, like, messed with my head. Well, you say that. So what, what impact did that have, reading those things on, on Twitter and on oh, Instagram? Everything. What, have you? what, what How did I, that affect you? My confidence. I was, I was very confident before X Factor, and then I just lost all confidence. Um, didn't want to go out. I, I stopped going. To, I, there was, like, certain things that I stopped. Um, I didn't, didn't turn up for work. Because I literally couldn't bring myself to get out of bed because I was so depressed. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, and you were like, so self-conscious. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah. Like, I didn't want to perform on stage. I missed I miss certain shows. Um, and it was just, I think it was really hard for the other three as well. Well, I was about to say, did you feel that you were being particularly singled out for that kind of online abuse? Yeah, or was it something that the rest of the girls, could you kind of share with them I mean, what yeah, you were going through? Wrong, we've, all, like, we've all had it. But I think at that period of time, I think I got it the worst. And... Mm. Uh, I, th- I don't think it helped that I was in a girl group. I think there's such a stigma as well with how girl bands are supposed to look. Mm. Mm. And, um, yeah, and I was just... I didn't look like them. They were all a lot skinnier than me. And I think, yeah, people didn't like it. So when you're feeling as low as you were feeling and you've lost all that self-confidence, mm. how how did you start to get out of it? How, where did you find the courage yeah. to do this documentary? Well, um, first of all, I got rid of Twitter... Brilliant. For me, that was like... Is that the worst form of social media, in your opinion? Absolutely, yeah. Like, I've got Instagram now. I will never have Twitter again. I can't. Um, I've got Instagram, and I actually quite enjoy Instagram. Yeah, it's fun. Twitter, I just feel like it's a free-for for everyone to just say what they want about you. So as soon as I got rid of that, but it was a very weird experience for me. Like, it was like... 
I was very addicted to it. So as soon as I got rid of it, I, I found myself like, no, I need to have it. I, I, and it was like I, I wanted to hurt myself. It was mm. really strange. And mm. the only way I can describe it is that I thought if I keep reading these comments, my brain will get used to seeing them so it won't hurt as much every time I see it. Mm. That was wow. the kind of coping mechanism yeah. that you'd established. Yeah. Odd One Out is uh, Jesse's documentary, which is on tonight on BBC One, yeah. which kind of talks a little bit about the times when you, you've you been trolled on, yeah. on, on social media. Mm -hmm. Now, there'll be people listening, uh, mums and dads, and also um, young uh, girls especially, I'd, yeah. I'd imagine, who've been, who go for a similar thing. They might look at you and go, well, you're a pop star, yeah. and you're kind of famous and you're beautiful, you know, you don't understand what it's really like. What would you say to, to, to young kids who maybe have gone for a similar thing with bullying, possibly on social media? I it, you know what, it's so hard because... I feel really scared now for the younger generation because mm. obviously I grew up as a kid with like a normal phone that had like snake. I didn't even have internet on there. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know, it worries me because I'm like, kids growing up now don't know no different. Mm. And what a scary world to live in. But I think parents need to have a bit more responsibility in how much they let their, like what they're showing to their kids and what, yeah. they're, what their kids are using with like social media. So I think, yeah, parents have to like keep an eye on it, especially... Um, and just, yeah, I just think, just have fun. Like, it's not all about your phone and social media. Like, go out with your friends, have fun. Because I think if you're on social media all the time, you can become obsessed with it. And it literally You waste can... a lot of time Absolutely, on it. I mean, I yeah. think we're all guilty of it. Mm. I love I'll, Instagram. I'll, yeah, I know. Like, and I'm often going, oh, this is lovely. Let's take a picture yeah, of this. And my husband yeah. goes, can we just enjoy the moment? Absolutely, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, okay. Like, I'll go out now and I can't, I'll, if I go for, like, dinner with friends or family, I don't take my phone with me because I just want to be, I want to like In the engage, moment, you know yeah. what I mean? But like, yeah. I'll go to a restaurant, if, like, I look around and everyone's on their phone. Mm. Um, no. But yeah, I, I just think we just need to like engage and, and talk it's to an each other. because yeah. I, I guess um, you you girls were the sort of first girl band to sort of become famous in yeah. that social media era. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and it's interesting because obviously beforehand you'll meet fans and they'll be saying you're amazing and so you kind of get used to that kind of Adulation, and yeah, yeah, of course. But when people can hide behind a social flip side. media, yeah. And then, but it's I don't know what drives people to be so vicious. It's their own, so I, I very sad, dark world. I honestly can't get my head around it. Like, don't get me wrong, I still get it now. Nowhere near as bad as like it was four years ago. But like, I just, I just don't understand how you, how you can ever want to make someone feel that way, especially when you don't even know that person. Mm -hmm. But like, luckily now I've got a better mindset. But back then I didn't. Um, so I didn't, I didn't know like. I couldn't understand as to why people were doing it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it really, really... They're not me. well, I don't think, no, people exactly. like that. They need help them, themselves, really. You mentioned uh, body image as being an issue that you you that you, that you face in yeah. uh, on the show, on, on Odd One Out, that we will see tonight. Mm. For, for girls, it's obviously difficult, and it obviously in social media doesn't make it any easier no. for them, right? No, absolutely not. And I think a lot of what we see on Instagram isn't real. They're all filtered, they're either face-tuned, like... They're edited, and um, I think we, well, for me personally, with the platform that I have, I've got a responsibility to put more stuff online that is more real. Yeah. So that when girls see it, they aren't like, oh, God, I don't look like that. They can, that's why we, when, for us as a group, we did the video strip where we literally put all the, like, words everyone said about us, and it was, like, hadn't been airbrushed, like, you could literally see all our stretch marks, and we had real women in there, because for us, like, we wanted women and young girls to see that and be like, instead of being like, oh, God, I don't look like that, be like, oh, my God, I, I look like that I've and got feel that. good about themselves, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? And I think, yeah, we've got a huge responsibility. So I think for just people in the industry, it's good to, like, especially open up if you have got problems and, like, people, like, it's nice to share that. It's, it, you shouldn't be embarrassed. I think so many of us, like, when we've got problems, are like, scared to talk about to it. To be and vulnerable. The, yeah, of course. Mm. And for me personally, that was a big thing for me. Like, I was so embarrassed and felt so ashamed that I didn't want to talk about it. And for me, not talking about it made it worse for me mentally. And I mm. think that's what led me to depression. Um, and talking of talking about it and being supported, can I ask you how your Chris Hughes is? Because obviously, <laughs> I have, I'm married to Chris Man, Hughes. His husband is called Chris I know, Hughes. I, uh, <laughs> I know. But how is your Chris oh, Hughes? He's lovely. How has he been throughout this? It's been obviously like it was weird for him because when he first got with me, like he didn't really know I had insecurities until obviously I told him about it, and then the things that he that which I then told him about, he then started to notice. Um, but he's just so supportive. He's just the loveliest person I've ever met. And, um, yeah, he just brings me up every day. And I think 
that's what you he need. loves you for you. Or yeah. it seems to me like Chris, the two Chris Hughes we know certainly <laughs> quite similar. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's a good egg. He's lovely. And just uh, one final thing, because there will be little mix fans listening, yeah. and there might be little mix fans who've maybe had a tough time on social media, mm. or maybe even just sort of bullying at school. Yeah. What would what would you say to them? What message would you give to them? What have you think, learned from the making of the film? Well, I think you've got to surround yourself with real, true, good friends always talk about it like whether it be big small like you've got to talk about it if you're feeling low because keeping it all in just makes you feel a lot worse mm. um and just just i know it's so much easier said than done just trying to try to ignore it yeah well just listen. don't scroll down no don't no, scroll it's down. literally the worst <laughs> thing you can do yeah, yeah. it is well, listen, it's good advice. Uh, and also, you make sure you check out uh, the show as well. It's called Odd One Out. It's Jesse's uh, story. Jesse, thanks for being so honest and thank oh, you for no, coming yeah, in. You're a real Jessie inspiration. Thank well you. Done, <laughs> thank you. This is hard.